and welcome to 3D Printing Thursday. My name is Matthew, and I'm an engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. As new materials are released for printers, new opportunities to use 3D printed parts to replace or be used as functional components arise. With the ability to adjust aspects like infill geometry or small dimensional changes quickly, rapid prototyping and form-fitting parts can be printed with ease. Adjusting the infill of a printed geometry may reduce material costs and affect part strength, but often doesn't change the outward appearance of the parts. In order to make part identification easier when doing things like infill adjustments, it may be more advantageous to dye parts new colors and make it easier to view or make part colors closer to a company's design or the tool it attaches to. In today's video, we'll first discuss how adjusting infill geometry does affect printed parts, a reason why multiple versions of the same part may be printed for prototyping, and how dyeing 3D printed parts is a simple, cheap, and effective way to change the outward appearance for part identification or other uses. To help show off how infill geometries can affect parts, we've printed a few flexible items using MarkForge's Smooth TPU in white. Now this is just an example of material. The same properties do apply to other materials, just TPU is a great way to show off how flexibility changes through the infill adjustments. From just looking at them, there really isn't a noticeable difference. But once we begin flexing these parts, it becomes clear which ones are more flexible than others. TPU is a flexible material, so adjustments made inside of infill geometry has a larger effect on how these parts can bend. If we were to use a more rigid material, the part may not flex as drastically, but the same principles apply. Reducing the infill geometry lowers part strength and increases flexibility. Inside Iger, we can take a closer peek at how the internal geometry of these parts differ. As we increase the infill thickness, change the infill type, or adjust wall layers, more material will be used inside of our part, adding strength and rigidness. This also increases the cost of the part, time to print, and changes of the pathing the printer will use, which may affect the appearance of certain features. The ability to adjust this infill is what allows designers to enhance additive parts without making changes to the geometry itself. This is a popular way to rapidly test parts, as some infill thickness will hold their shape and strength for tooling and during assembly better than others. We can see from this Iger simulation that despite nothing changing geometry-wise, the lower infill density has a higher deviation in shape under force. As we increase the infill thickness, factor safety and the strength of the part also increase along with it. As more parts are printed with certain flexibility or infill geometry, it can become hard to validate which versions are which, even with physical tests. Choosing the incorrect part for a machine or prototype can lead to potentially catastrophic issues or invalid results during testing. As such, finding ways to make part identification quicker and with confidence is an important task when designing them. While using specific containers can be one method, it can be difficult to track if the parts are swapped often and from different operators. Or if you try to mark your parts, there is the chance that the marking can rub off. Thankfully, most 3D printed materials, especially ones with plastic, can be dyed using coloring agents and warm water. When done correctly, it will apply evenly and give parts a noticeable difference in appearance right away. It may even help with certain aspects of the print like flexibility and brittleness. If you're interested in learning more about the process to dye parts, we have a very helpful blog which will be linked in the description. While we have been using MarkForge's TPU for this video, this article shows the dyeing being done on powder-based material. The workflow is nearly the same, however. Do know that this process can be done with even just a coffee cup and warm water. The dyeing solution and the time parts spend in the water is what plays a major role in how true to color it will be. On average, the process only takes a few minutes to dye multiple parts at once, and a small investment in dyeing agents. Based on the infill settings of these TPU parts, they were grouped into three categories, low, standard, and thick. Each of the groups was assigned a color and all the parts were dyed from that group with the same color. The color assignment of the part is up to you as the designer. For this situation, it's based on the infill geometry used and we're identifying parts by their stiffness. Some other reasons to dye parts could be grouping prototypes together, identifying end of arm tooling that fits to certain parts, medical devices to specific patients, or improved part appearance from the base material. For example, if you're producing similar looking end of arm grippers or form fitting fixtures, it may be more advantageous to dye parts based off of what it interacts with. This way, operators could quickly swap parts as production shifts without having to make assumptions on which gripper to use. All blue printed parts are related to part one, or red could be related to another. These simple changes can produce massive efficiency and time improvements by removing operator and manufacturing assumptions. 
Before dying, it would be hard to know which parts are within a group without physically testing, but now we can easily see which parts go together from the color. Taking a closer look, we can see that the color applied evenly and doesn't peel when flexed. This is due to the printed material absorbing the water and not just applying it as a coat. With a simple setup and a little extra time, you can make part identification easier for prototyping and operations. Dying parts based on similar factors, it's easy to know which parts have used different settings from each other and where they can be used in the end. I hope you found this video helpful and inspires you to try to implement color identification into your workflows for printed parts. If you're interested in learning more printing tips, subscribe to our channel for more 3D Printing Thursday videos or other videos on additive and engineering tools.